continuing our studies of chapter 8, Lipids and Membranes, and in this lesson we want to start to look at membrane proteins. We find that for most cell types, the membrane is about half protein by mass, although this can depend on the cell type. So let's look at the types of membrane proteins that we find. First of all, there's the integral membrane protein, and that's indicated by the number 1 in our figure here. You'll notice it spans that entire bilayer. Remember, that protein is passing through a very hydrophobic environment, and so it's going to need to have some hydrophobic regions to interact with those lipid molecules. For this reason, if we want to isolate the protein and separate it from the membrane, we have to coat it with a detergent that will interact with it, and that's illustrated in the bottom of the figure here. It, those uh, detergent molecules will interact in much the same way that the lipids do. The second type of membrane protein is called an anchored protein, and that's indicated by the number 2 here. It carries a lipid molecule as an anchor, that is, it's connected to the protein, and that integrates within the membrane. You'll notice in this case, however, it only integrates on one of the monolayers. In the case of an integral membrane protein, it passes through the entire membrane. And you'll notice it has regions on the inside of the membrane as well as the outside of the membrane. For an anchored protein, though, that anchor is only on one side, and so the protein itself will either be facing inside or outside, depending on where that anchor lies. Our third type of membrane protein is a peripheral protein, and that's indicated by the number 3 here. It is not directly attached to the membrane. It can dissociate away, as indicated here. It might associate with an integral protein, as in this illustration, or it might associate with a lipid head group. And as we go through the semester, we'll find examples of all three of these types of membrane proteins. Let's look more particularly at those integral membrane proteins. And we'll find that as they pass through that hydrophobic environment, there are two main ways in which they deal with that and accommodate that environment. And as it relates to the two main types of patterned secondary structure that we saw in Chapter 4, alpha helix and beta sheets. First of all, we have those that form transmembrane helices, an alpha helix. It may be a single pass, that is, a single helix, or a multipass we have, where we have more than one helix, as illustrated in our figure here. These residues are alpha helical, and remember, that means that those peptide bonds which are very polar, are neutralized by forming hydrogen bonds. The residues that compose the membrane-spanning region are all hydrophobic. So in order to pass that membrane, we need about 20 amino acids, and so what we'll find is a string of 20 hydrophobic amino acids in order to span that bilayer. We have an illustration here on the far right where the nonpolar residues are indicated in green. This would represent the transmembrane portion, and you can see it's mostly hydrophobic. There are polar residues in purple, and these would be interacting with our polar head groups on either side of that membrane. If we look at the primary sequence, it's pretty easy to spot a transmembrane helix because we're going to have a series of hydrophobic residues, 20 in a row, and we'll also see these polar aromatic residues at either end of that helix. So it's pretty easy to spot in the primary sequence. The other type of integral membrane protein motif has to do with these beta sheets. So we need to have several beta strands in order to satisfy the hydrogen bonding of the backbone. Remember, those peptide bonds are very polar and that will not interact well with the hydrophobic environment of the lipids. And so we can satisfy or neutralize the polarity of those bonds by forming those hydrogen bonding contacts. And in order to do that, we must have several strands and form a more or less cylindrical or barrel-shaped structure. It's called a beta barrel. The smallest has eight strands, any smaller than that, and the structure would be co too constrained. In this case, where you, we only have eight strands, it forms a very narrow cavity. As we'll see, usually there are more strands than this. 
In this case, the exterior surface of that beta sheet is in contact with that hydrophobic environment and those residues, that is the side chains that are facing that hydrophobic environment, tend to be hydrophobic side chains. There are other residues, however, that are facing the internal portion of that barrel and that's an aqueous environment and so those would tend to be more hydrophilic. We also find in this case aromatic residues interacting with those lipid head groups at either end of that bilayer. In this case, however, since we have alternating amino acid residues, some facing outward that are hydrophobic and some facing inward to the barrel that are hydrophilic, we can't easily spot the sequence in the primary structure. So in our illustration here we have our beta barrel in blue, the hydrophobic residues are in green, they're facing external, the aromatics in gold, remember those are interacting with our polar head groups. In our next lesson we want to look at the lipid linked proteins and see how they associate with the membrane and see is there any restriction to the movement of proteins within the lipid bilayer.